Ah, oh, there it is. Bartlett's test of sphericity, 7,018. That is the null model chi-squared over here. And Tucker-Lewis Lewis index, the uh, comparative fit index, and the root mean square error of approximation all make use of the implied and null model chi-squares and the degrees of freedom. Uh, some of them don't make use of both pieces of information, but we can calculate these uh, relatively simply. And what I've done is I've, I've created an Excel sheet that calculates it uh, automatically, and I'm going to make that available uh, for download. And I just have to input the null model chi-square into the B2 box. So in this case here, null model chi-square is Bartlett's test of sphericity chi-square. So I just need to find that. 7,018.828. So 7,018.828. And degrees of freedom equal to 105. So I just have to put that in there, 105. Now I need to get my implied model chi-square which is equal to 213 from memory, 213.866. 213.866. And degrees of freedom equal to 63. And my sample size is equal to 649, I believe. 649. So 649. And now on this side here, I've got the normative fit, uh, norm fit index estimated at 0.97, which you hope to see above 0 0.950. And in this case here, it's larger than 0 0.950. Therefore, my model, my three-factor solution, based on these data, appears to be supported. Now here's the uh, comparative fit index is equal to 0.978 also above 0 0.950. Therefore, I have confidence in my model solution. And TLI is also above 0 0.950, which is uh, greater than, uh, which suggests again the model solution is acceptable, or that the model is acceptable. And finally, RMCEA, which is an absolute clo close fit index, is less than 0 0.05 or 0 0.06 uh, or 0 0.08. It's actually equal to 0 0.061. So if you use a rule of somewhere between 0 0.08 and 0 0.601, 0 0.06, that is, it has to be less than that, then I have support for the model. So these are very commonly used, particularly CFI, TLI, and RMCEA, are very commonly used in confirmatory factor analysis. And this is a demonstration of how it can be used in partial confirmatory factor analysis. And just to, just to repeat, if I haven't mentioned this clearly, is that if this model solution, which is based on three factors, was not associated with good f fit values, then I have no hope of moving into a confirmatory factor analysis framework and confirming an oblique three-factor model. But the fact that these index values are suggesting good fit, I now at least have a chance of getting good fit if I moved into a confirmatory factor anal analytic framework. So you should you need to do you should do a PCFA first before doing a CFA. You could end up wasting a lot of time collecting new data when the PCFA could tell would be able to tell you beforehand that you have no hope of getting good fit. Now I haven't calculated SRMR, which is a very commonly used and good absolute close fit index in confirmatory factor analysis, and can it can also be applied in uh, partial confirmatory factor analysis. And what you have to do, this is going to take me a couple uh, minute or so, is go and create a new file and input all of the residual correlations into a column of data. So all the residual correlations go into a column of data. And then I need to square those values. Whoops. Uh, 